Hello and welcome to the Meraki Fall Fest 2023. Uh, we're very happy to have you uh, here at DNH. Uh, I want to introduce my co-host today. Uh, first off, Mark Jacobs. Thanks for joining us. He's a systems engineer with Cisco. And uh, we have Skylar O'Donnell as well. He's on my team and uh, one of our sales engineers. All right, so we're, we're very excited about everything we have to present here. It's a chilly day here in Pennsylvania. I hope you guys are all warm and cozy where you're at. Um, but uh, if you have any questions along the way, we do have a Q&A panel on one of the sides here. Uh, post your questions there and we'll answer those at the end. Um, for those of, the, those of you that did not see, we are giving away uh, some mugs to some select winners. Uh, so stay through the whole event and you qualify to potentially win one of those and we'll get those shipped out to you uh, if you're one of the winners there. And then uh, otherwise, we're gonna kick off. We have a lot of content to cover here and uh, hopefully we can get through it here in time, in fact. Uh, but uh, again, very happy to be with you today. Um, so first off, uh, Skylar, there's some great news uh, in the Meraki side of things. Uh, last year, we told them about APs that can be managed in the Meraki dashboard, and now we have some switch information. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, it's really exciting. Um, right now, uh, as you mentioned, we have the converged wireless, which can be uh, used kind of on either side uh, for the preferred licensing. They've also added some new functionality uh, to integrate DNA Center uh, with uh, the Meraki dashboard to further enhance, enhance your visibility and automation. And then um, I think, too, we'll see here soon maybe some additional um, innovation and integration between uh, wireless LAN controllers and Meraki. But on the switching side, um, we've seen a lot of really great and cool advances, um, uh, the first of which being the uh, management being added for the C9300. Um, and it's not just with the C9300. Uh, we'll talk about it here in a little bit, but they're actually adding uh, full uh, Meraki 9300 as well. Um, the management will allow you to do a lot of uh, different things um, from scaling and doing a zero touch provisioning and uh, deploying a lot more quickly, um, adding a flexibility on your firmware upgrades and doing some uh, management as well as uh, just making everything a lot more simple and intuitive uh, as you've come to expect with Meraki uh, and a lot of things. And uh, as you can see, uh, they're bringing out a lot of uh, really, really cool models uh, with the Meraki 9300 series. Uh, and it'll add a ton of um, actually uh, um, scalability, modularity, and all sorts of other things um to uh kind of the environment that um, was sometimes lacking or um, seen as lacking on the meraki side and then you can kind of see on the right here um, of the slide uh coming in the very near future uh, we have some really cool stuff um, it's still kind of on the roadmap for the second half of calendar year 24 uh, but as you can see we got some uh, really cool fiber ag aggregation switches coming as well um, and then uh, on the actual visibility side uh, with some of the other uh, models, um, the Catalyst 9300 can actually, um, as we mentioned, be managed. But um, beyond that, it actually has monitoring built into the, um, uh, the dashboard now. So you can actually, uh, with an Essentials license, connect up uh, to um, the Meraki dashboard and uh, start um, checking out and seeing all that visibility and layer seven information that Meraki is known for. And it's not actually just limited to the 9300. We're seeing that on the 9200 and 9400 as well. Um, so I hope if you have any of those out there and you have some uh, DNA licensing, it is a really cool way to um, uh, add and expand your uh, Meraki environment and kind of begin to uh, mix and match uh, the Catalyst and Meraki environments as well. Yeah, so, so we can actually mix uh, the, you have a Catalyst switch managed by the uh, dashboard now in Meraki and then a Meraki switch as well. We can have both of those interacting with each other, correct? Uh, definitely, it's actually um, a question we're getting more and more from people. It's something uh, that's actually encouraged by Cisco and Meraki. It's something we'll see a lot more and more going forward uh, with um, kind of a convergence that um, you'll see more and more and that'll kind of be a little bit of our message today, not as um, probably as hard as we uh, talked about last time, but uh, we will definitely be talking about it today. Cisco has also created a number of tools and applications to make those integrations easier uh, through the API first focus that Meraki has, as well as um, things like a, um, a Docker um, uh, container app for uh, integration and um, uh, integration and uh, kind of application experience with ICE um, to allow you to do um, some of the things we're about to talk about a little later, like adaptive policy, as well as um, just kind of uh, general uh, 
segmentation and micro segmentation. So lots of really um, cool stuff. And then uh, as we've kind of already talked about, the API keys allow you to really leverage Cisco Talos and all its security services and software such as Duo um, or um, uh, Secure Connect or any um, sort of um, those other programs, which uh, Cisco ICE um, has really um, put a lot of time and effort into making them easy to use and easy to integrate. Uh, and then uh, the other great thing is to, uh, with the 9300s, you kind of get the Meraki advantage uh, where you um, get a lot more information than you may typically get if you were managing the switch via uh, command line. Uh, it can be a little more difficult to um, really troubleshoot or get to uh, the source of the problem. And and as anyone uh, that's kind of an old school network guy like myself um, has um, tried, if uh, user experiences some issues, um, you know, you can't always uh, troubleshoot those. Um, they're not always present when uh, you actually get to the user or when they actually tell you about it. Um, so uh, Meraki kind of uh, adds on top of all the great features the 9300 has, um, kind of a guided troubleshooting with uh, monitoring. And that's probably not even limited to the 9300, I should say. Uh, but it will provide those uh, port level packet and error counters, in-depth monitoring uh, in the dashboard with easy to read metrics. So you can tell uh, if there's maybe VLAN mismatches or uh, things like that, uh, remote troubleshooting uh, via the cloud uh, um, uh, dashboard uh, where you can easily get in. And they have a, actually a really cool read-only troubleshooting console where you can uh, run some commands and get some extra information on uh, what's going on on the um, that uh, on the switch as well as um, with Meraki, you have those uh, web hooks and um, kind of API hooks. So you can actually uh, create email and web hook alerts for uh, proactive responses if there is something going on on the switch. Uh, Meraki's dashboard will see it and uh, those APIs and automation can go ahead and send out a notification or maybe create an incident in ServiceNow or something like that. Uh, as well as um, if you ever had to packet capture on a switch, uh, it can really be a headache. So um, with uh, the Meraki dashboard, it really eliminates having to kind of clone the port and do a lot of those other things that you had to do in the past. Those are some incredibly exciting uh, capabilities that we have now on the Meraki dashboard with the Catalyst line. And, and this works with a, a new install of Catalyst switches if you're doing that, and you, you can not actually get these, uh, you know, pre-imaged to Meraki basically. Uh, but if you have a Brownfield installation that you want to convert over to the Meraki dashboard, then that's a capability as well. So, uh, you know, you have to jump through a few hoops to get that done, but it's doable. So uh, your existing switches can be moved into the dashboard, which is very exciting too, because it just adds, a, you know, that ease of management plus uh, all the capabilities of the switches uh, on the Meraki dashboard. Now, on the, on the Meraki switching side of things, we do have some Meraki native hardware as well that's just been released this past year. Um, so we have the MS-130 line. Mark, tell us about those. Mark, check your mute just in case, or did we lose him? He's still there. There he is. Not catching your audio, Mark. I think I was muted. All right, can you hear me now? There we go. We can hear you now. I, I apologize for that. I'm sorry for uh, that. That's all right. Uh, <laughs> Present so, uh, There you go, there you go. But as I was saying, so guys, I'm really excited to announce the MS-130 uh, switch line within Meraki. So if you haven't heard about it, we recently released this product line. This product line has a couple different models. So we have the MS-130R, which is our first ever ruggedized switch for ruggedized environments. So if you have any hazardous type environments from a very cold environment to negative 40 degrees to a very extreme hot environment to 158 degrees, this MS-130R uh, will fit perfectly. Uh, it's IP30 protection, right? So um, it's going to make those environments uh, like nothing when, when, when deploying in any hazardous type of environments. Uh, flexible mounting options as well, right? So uh, anywhere from a rack mount to a wall mount, we give you flexibility on where and how you want to mount this. Uh, so that's the MS-30R. Very excited to announce our first ruggedized uh, switch within the Meraki product line. But uh, in addition, we also have the MS-130X models. So if you haven't heard about these, these are our multi-gig 
uh, uh, options within our MS-130. So if you're looking for higher speeds, if you have Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi deploying Wi-Fi 7 and want to take advantage of, of that higher throughput, you're going to need uh, some multi-gig ports within your switches to take advantage of those higher speeds. So uh, anywhere from two and a half gig and up, uh, we can support on the MS-130. Many different flavors, as you can see, right? So we have, uh, you know, the eight ports, we have the 12 ports. Now, first 12 port within the MS-130 and the Meraki line, very excited about that. And then our typical 24 and 48 ports all powered, you know, all, all have the PoE options and different uplink options. But I'm very excited to announce our first ruggedized switch is the MS-130. Aaron, uh, I think right. I want to pass it back to you. Yeah, very good. That was good there. All right. And then uh, also we have the uh, Catalyst Meraki 9300s that are natively uh, imaged, as I mentioned. Uh, Skylar, uh, tell, tell us about some of the features that carry over really well between the two platforms there. Yeah, uh, lots of really exciting stuff. Uh, one of the really cool things uh, that I'm excited about um, is uh, the stacking power and uh, some of the um, customization that I mentioned a little earlier. Um, stacking power has never been on Meraki before. So um, for those of you not familiar with it, it allows you to um, actually stack the power supplies um, using a similar cable to uh, a stacking cable. It's a second cable. And then if there was some sort of power failure, or if a power supply wasn't able to, to supply the same amount of power it needed, the uh, switches will actually um, kind of regulate between themselves and uh, try to distribute the power the best they can to keep everything up and working. Um, and then, uh, you know, we talked about the core and distribution and aggregation options, but they're also coming out with some new features uh, with a new license that I'll be talking about a little later um, that some of you uh, that may be familiar with the MS390, um, have used before, but it's actually expanding to these newer lines. Adaptive policy, uh, which is really cool and it lets you do some micro segmentation really easy and integration with ICE. Uh, NetFlow and AVC, which I'll talk about a little more. And then as uh, Mark talked about, uh, cheaper multi-gig all across the line. So it's making it a lot easier to provide uh, multi-gig switching on the access layer without spending a ton of money, which uh, wasn't always the case before. Yeah, that's, that's very exciting. That's a, it's a great line of uh, that access level switch. Uh, that brings all those capabilities in and then having a ruggedized switch that, that's just uh, fantastic on meraki I, I look forward to that line kind of being expanded but uh, uh, what they have now even uh, just kind of really makes that happen um, so uh, we, we want to move on to a little bit different topic now we always need to get network access to places and sometimes backward uh, backup network access and uh, one of the ways to do that with meraki is with the mg cellular gateways uh, so the previous models we had uh, functioned well, and they were LTE, but now we have some 5G options. So we've got that faster speed, faster throughput, and as 5G uh, spreads across the U.S., Canada, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of uh, potential there for uh, moving data fast. Um, even if your network goes down, you need to fail over. It's pretty amazing what can happen here. Um, Skylar, tell us about the, the two new models here. Yeah, I'm really excited about uh, the MG51 and 51E uh, coming to the MG family. As Aaron mentioned, it brings uh, essentially 5G and an extra layer of ruggedness and reliability to the um, network. The MG51 is the um, internal antenna model, and the MG51E is the uh, external antenna model. It can use, I believe, four external antennas. Um, they do need to be Meraki antennas. That is um, one of the... Big mentions with that and one of the asks we get. So um, that is a consideration uh, when you're building it out, but they're really, really cool. Um, they are IP67 rated, so you can use them indoor or outdoor. So unlike the competitors, they can actually uh, be outside where they need to be instead of sitting in a server room where uh, you don't get a ton of uh, cellular signal. Uh, they are 5G capable. Uh, the MG51 uh, is actually certified to work with AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon in the US. And uh, there are some other carriers abroad. Uh, but generally speaking, uh, compatibility is based on the bands, and as long as um, the carrier can match those bands, then they can be used. Uh, one of the great things about being able to use all the carriers is uh, if you're building it out and you have a remote site that really doesn't have an ISP connection or something else like that, you can uh, 
essentially go with this uh, without the need to worry about which uh, carrier has the best signal there. Uh, you can uh, buy the device and then uh, choose the best signal based upon the actual location uh, in the end. Uh, and then um, the other really cool thing is these are actually FirstNet Band 14 compatible and IPv6 ready. Uh, so if you are a um, first responder, or uh, work with first responders or emergency responders. Uh, these are ready to go and uh, they're a great option for disaster recovery or um, standing up a site really quickly. So uh, maybe if you have a kit in the back room, uh, just in case something goes wrong, they can be uh, really great, especially for municipalities or schools or um, other things like that. Um, it can run on PoE from an MX or a um, power adapter. Um, it will always favor the power adapter, but it does have the ability to use uh, PoE, so you don't need to run external power out to um, the MG. And it has two 2.5 uh, gigabit Ethernet uh, ports, so it actually has um, the ability to do um, two connections and uh, fail over if one of them uh, would happen to fail. Um, so you can actually do a little bit of high availability, which I think is really cool. Meraki's kind of thought of everything. Uh, and then uh, finally, they uh, can actually, if you have the appropriate data plan, can uh, reach up to two gigabit per second uh, throughput. So they can actually uh, give you a true, um, you know, full ISP experience should the network go down or just at branch sites uh, where, um, you know, around me, we have some very remote areas sometimes where they stand up spots and maybe only a megabit per second is available. Uh, this would be a real um, valuable alternative now. So uh, that's something... Uh, really great out there. Uh, Mark, I know you had some great ideas on how the models can be used. Uh, do you have any um, ideas where we can uh, kind of use these? Yeah, I, I, I think you mentioned a couple uh, really, really good ones, but uh, yeah, so uh, you mentioned this one. So primary, I think that this is the most common use case is the primary WAN, right? So if you're in an area where, you know, wired internet connection is maybe too expensive or uh, it's not available yet, the uh, MG51 is a perfect use case for that, for that, for, the, for that, uh, example, a uh, secondary WAN, right? So if, if you have an MX as your primary secondary WAN interface, like Skylar said, you can connect that MX to the MG51 for a secondary WAN failover. Uh, high availability is a, a great use use case. You mentioned that as well, uh, Skylar. And then, uh, you know, primary and secondary WAN for SD-WAN, I think is a really good use case. Uh, if you have an SD-WAN uh, environment, I uh, need a um, uh, high availability between two of your WAN links using SD-WAN. The MG51 is the perfect uh, 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 appliance where you can fit in that SD-WAN environment. So all, all very, uh, uh, very, really good use cases, very common use cases. And I think the MG51 will be a very popular uh, box. Couldn't agree more. Uh, <laughs> indeed. And, and these are ruggedized too. So if you have to install a unit outside uh, to get your best network signals, run a wire through the wall, that's exactly what they're, you know, capable of doing. Uh, really good option for that secondary connection or, you know, as Mark mentioned, primary connection in places that may not have uh, uh, other options that are working well. Um, we're going to move on to uh, some of the Microsoft, or not Microsoft, the MS is uh, hard to drop sometimes. So the MS licensing, the, the Meraki switches, uh, we want to talk about the advanced license that's available now. Uh, Skylar, tell us a little bit about the advanced license there. Yeah, these new switches can use the advanced license as mentioned. Uh, it comes with some really cool features. Uh, one of the main considerations I will say is that um, you will want to, um, kind of like with the MXs, you will need to build these out where um, all the switches would have the advanced license. Um, if you look at the new Meraki subscriptions, uh, which are coming out now and starting to roll out, they're a really great option for this because they let you break it down a little more granularly than some others, but you can definitely do this with per device or co-term without any issue. Um, and uh, the MS-130 and uh, the 9300s are a really great option and make it a lot more cost effective. Um, the first feature though, uh, let's look at is um, AVC NetFlow. Uh, NetFlow provides uh, valuable information about the network and user applications. Uh, peak usage times and traffic routing. Uh, this type of information uh, allows uh, organizations, uh, whether it be the security part of the organization or IT, to export uh, incredibly granular information about any of these traffic flows uh, through an MS390, uh, 130, uh, or a um, 9300, as well as any kind of catalyst switch that also has uh, the NetFlow capability. Um, and uh, 
it really is nice. Um, and uh, it doesn't matter whether it's east, west, north, or southbound traffic. Um, you really can detect it. So if you're not familiar with that, north and southbound is kind of on and off the network or to and from the cloud. And then east and west is kind of across the network. So that's kind of how that works. Um, and then one of the coolest things that I think out there right now is uh, the encrypted traffic analytics. Um, they uh, provide deep network in, uh, insight that enhances the visibility and promotes compliance and shortens response times. Uh, it does this by identifying suspicious behaviors by looking at the metadata of the flow on the network using machine learning and analytics. Um, however, it does uh, require integration with um, Cisco Secure Network or uh, Cisco Secure Network uh, Cloud Analytics or just Cisco Secure Network Analytics. Um, some of you may be familiar with it. It was formerly known as um, Stealth Watch, so it's a really cool product out there. And especially if you're using that Catalyst uh, DNA licensing and you're trying to kind of integrate with more with Meraki, um, some of that uh, potentially is already included in your uh, license if you have the DNA Advantage license. Uh, and then finally, uh, one of the coolest things out there, I think I'm really excited to talk about it, and I uh, feel honored that we actually got someone from Meraki to help us out with um, the little demo that we're going to do. Um, it's a really cool thing. I won't talk about too much about it, but it is uh, micro segmentation. It allows you to do networking a lot easier and scale out a lot more quickly. Um, but a big thank you uh, to Josh Collier from Rocky, um, who's going to help us out with this, as well as uh, Josh, Torland, and Sarah for um, helping out with this portion and kind of organizing the demo. Uh, and with that, um, let's uh, take a look at this uh, demo from Josh. Hey everybody, my name is Josh Collier. I'm a Meraki Partner Solutions Engineer. Today, I'm going to be talking about Meraki Adaptive Policy, which is micro-segmentation with unified policy enforcement for your Meraki environments. So jumping into it, what is Adaptive Policy? Adaptive Policy is Meraki's implementation of Cisco TrustSec to provide a holistic approach to policy enforcement across your entire environment. If you'll notice, it's organization-wide, right? So for all of your Meraki IT infrastructure across all of your different sites, right? No matter how big or how small. To do this, we leverage security group tags, which is base functionality of Cisco TrustSec. And what we accomplish here is we provide that context sharing across the data plane to provide consistent security integration across your wireless switching and security appliance infrastructure with Meraki. If you're not familiar with SGTs or security group tags today, you have your packets that are sent between your IT infrastructure with a Cisco TrustSec deployment, you have that CMD or Cisco metadata field, uh, that header within that packet, right? And a specific field within that header is designated for the SGT value. And that SGT value is assigned or associated with the device that initially sent that packet. So we can always keep track of what logical group that client endpoint is a part of, depending on how you categorize that for your business. So let's take a look at a quick demo. In this demo topology, we're gonna to be taking a look at Elijah over here on the right in our sales organization. We want Elijah to be able to speak to our SE group, which is gonna be Mary Anderson, but not speak to engineering, which is gonna be Sam. I speak, I mean, have network communication with across those devices. So let's jump over into the Meraki dashboard. Like I mentioned, this is at an organization level. So I can jump over here into organization and then adapt to policy. And immediately what I can take a look at are my networks. I can see where adaptive policy is enabled or disabled and change that if I so desire in the top right here. Next, I can go into groups and I'm able to see specifically what groups I have designated within this adaptive policy deployment. I want to add a group. It's as simple as going in, specifying that name or that group, whether it's your servers, IT, HR, SEs, whatever have you, assigning that SGT value that we talked about and I'm good to go there. Next, if I wanna do something a little bit more granular than an all encompassing allow or deny, I can jump over into custom ACLs and I can do things like deny specific traffic sets, like denying ICMP or TCP or UDP. And for this, for this example, we can set up a deny all, right, for ICMP traffic. Then finally, we're gonna go into policies. And it's very simple to add a policy and show which groups that policy is gonna be between. So in our case, we wanted someone in our sales organization, right, to not be able to talk to engineering. You can see I can hit deny and that'll show up as right here or make sure they are able to talk to their respective SE. 
and I can enable that, see that green here. Again, if I want to do something more granular and custom based, I can add an entry, specify that example where we had to deny any ICMP rule or whatever it's going to be there. So afterwards, right, if I want to make sure that this is um, you know, validated and taking effect, I can jump over into switching access policies. That's going to take me here. What I want to talk about here is dynamic versus static SGT assignment. So static assignment is great, right? On a per port level for switching or per SSID level, but where we're really going to see value for those, you know, small, medium customers, right? SMB style customers with medium to large size deployments is going to be dynamic assignment through a radius server like ICE, right? So we can make those changes dynamically and we can do everything from a centralized policy engine across Meraki and other Cisco infrastructure as well. So I've got my ICE radius server set up here and I can immediately jump in see which switch ports we're using for this configuration. So jumping in here, I'm going to see that I have Sam, Mary, and Elijah. And if you take a look, I've got Sam, who's going to be in our engineering group, group number 17. I've got Mary, who's going to be in our SE group, group 19. And I've got Elijah, who's going to be in our sales group of group 18. All right now that I've configured them to receive their appropriate SGTs from that radius server, I can filter based on my policies to make sure everything's going according to plan. So source group is sales. We want Elijah to be able to talk to some people and not talk to others, right? I can see validation that sales is able to speak to their respective SCs via the allow right here, and sales is not able to speak to engineering via the deny right here, right? Great example of a dynamic deployment. Let's take a look at something from a more static standpoint, right? I go over to switches and then I go to switch ports. That's going to take me into here. I'm going to search an MR36 so I can also talk about how this can be deployed for general wireless infrastructure. But once I go ahead and click on, you know, that particular switch port, this example, that's going to take me here. I'm able to come down here in configuration. And right here, you can see I have the ability to enable peer SGT capabilities, right? So whether it's per port or per SSID, First step is going to be enabling that so my devices know that I'm looking to implement adaptive policy and to pass those SGTs. And then I'm going to make sure to enable the appropriate group, right? For wireless, it's going to be that adaptive policy infrastructure group. Since I'm going to be assigning SGTs at a wireless standpoint, this was any wired client, I could just choose the respective adaptive policy group here that I would want them to get. Once that's done, I can go into wireless, I can hit access control. And I'm able to see specifically, let's say the SSID I'm concerned about is my IoT SSID. I can see all of my IoT devices are going to be tagged with that 900 adaptive policy group, right? That SGT of 900. So now, if I'm concerned about who my, you know, who's accessing my IoT resources, I can filter that as the source group, right? I can come in here and see that nobody is allowed to interact with those devices except for those specific IT employees. Right. So what does all this mean that we've proved out? Well, this is the foundation for Meraki Zero Trust. And customers of any size, but particularly those small medium business customers who wear multiple hats, have definitely seen challenges, right, with implementing consistent policy integration across their network because each individual IT infrastructure device or network device has to search that client and then search what policies they need to be associated with, map that to them, and then enforce those policies. This allows us to share context across your entire network, entire organization, all of your sites, and all of your IT infrastructure to make sure that we have consistent policy enforcement, a unified approach, and a true foundation for zero trust. Thank you. All that was right, a really great take... demo. Yeah, it sure was. Yeah, sure. We want to thank our uh, Meraki folks for helping us with that, with that again. Uh, we really appreciate their help there. Um, let's see. So uh, with that, uh, we're kind of done with some of that, but we do want to talk about some other, you know, things that aren't talked about much. Uh, one of those is the Meraki marketplace. It's, a, uh, actually a resale opportunity for you as partners. It's not through the standard Meraki purchase process. It's not necessarily even going through DNH, but there's a lot of, uh, great stuff there that, uh, can help you as a, as a partner, um, and, uh, the services you want to set up and, um, you know, just, uh, your general portfolio of capabilities. Um, Skylar, why don't you tell us about uh, one or two of your favorites there? 
Yeah, thanks, Aaron. This is one of the topics I always like to try to talk about whenever I get to speak to people about Meraki because it isn't is little to known about and it is very easy for you to resell and it's something that Meraki has vetted and made sure there's use cases for um, and it actually typically will help you integrate a lot of uh, the Meraki stuff with some other programs uh, that you already have. Uh, the first I always like to talk about is Splash Access. Uh, if you have attended any of uh, Meraki's kind of um, various sessions and things like that, specifically with wireless, uh, you potentially actually heard uh, the owner of Splash Access talk. Um, they work a lot with uh, Meraki. Um, I was actually just at an education conference uh, like two, three weeks ago, um, and the um, one of the uh, K through 12s was uh, specifically asking uh, about things that I mentioned Splash Access, and they were already talking to them about it. Um, they do a lot of really cool things. The first I wanted to mention was private IPSK. Um, Rocky already does do a smaller version of this where you have um, uh, a single SSID and then um, the network is divided by these uh, specific IPSK um, passcodes uh, that create essentially like these, essentially I think of them as uh, virtual private wireless LANs, um, kind of like a VLAN, but where all the devices that use that passcode can talk together, but other ones can't. Um, Rocky does have that functionality natively, but it um, is very limited and can't do it on the same scale. Splash Access has um, scaled it out uh, exponentially, so you can do it with significantly more um, and has made it uh, a much better solution for um, dormitories, uh, various campuses, um, uh, elderly care homes, uh, things like that. Um, they also have a lot of other types of uh, what I call wireless wiz wizardry that they um, can do through their portal uh, that just makes uh, managing uh, uh, essentially wireless networks on a larger scale a lot simpler and easier, um, especially if uh, you need various guest solutions. Uh, they can potentially come up with something custom for you. Uh, they are really cool. Uh, the other one I always like to call out um, is um, with all the Meraki sensors and cameras and buttons that are out there, um, they can essentially provide a Swiss Army knife functionality of functionality out there. Um, you can actually integrate it with um, access control um, systems uh, like Genia access control, um, where you can actually kind of create a truly safe space and have um, these uh, buttons and cameras that work and integrate and function all in one thing and actually provide a certain amount of automation uh, without all the extra, um, you know, kind of overhead and things like that. Um, that are kind of needed in various things. Uh, I, I kind of always say with Meraki, um, and I, I'm stealing it from someone I heard at Cisco Live. You automate the mundane and humanize the extraordinary. So all these things that, you know, typically took a lot of uh, overhead and different things like that, uh, where you would just, um, you know, spend a lot of man hours uh, working on them, uh, but they were basic tasks that didn't really help you grow the business. Uh, Meraki is really trying to kind of help you automate those, and then um, the extraordinary stuff like. Um, you know, designing a new network or um, growing those services, uh, which you don't always have the time to do. Um, Rocky's trying to help you um, do that with uh, kind of those automations. And I think Mark has uh, actually a few that he really likes too. So uh, Mark, uh, would you like to yeah. tell us about those? Thanks, Skylar. Yeah, I actually really like this question. Uh, so I have three applications in a marketplace that I like to talk about very quickly, right? Uh, one is probably the most popular, right, is service. ServiceNow. So there is a Meraki connector within ServiceNow uh, to, you know, simplify some of your incident management in, in network security. That's probably the one most popular ones I hear about. Uh, second one, the second one is probably my my favorite that doesn't get talked about as much as the, our other solutions. It's called VApp. So if you go on a marketplace, it's V dash app. They actually make a lot of different applications, or I, I should say, outcomes. Anywhere from, um, you know, VApp is a integration into Meraki Vision and Meraki Wireless. So they add on intelligence to our Meraki Vision cameras, like face mask, face mask detection or customer analytics, where they can tell, you know, what gender, what age, and what emotions a customer is feeling once they're walking into your, let's say, retail location. Uh, but one of my most favorites is Meraki Vision with Smart Vision Analytics within VApp. So uh, they they built some code uh, on top of our Meraki Vision cameras to give you a lot of intelligence just out of our uh, out of the Meraki platform, right? So I mentioned some of them. As far as face mask, face mask detection, 
uh, we can detect motions, we can detect age, we can uh, do um, customer counting. Um, I, I don't know if you guys have seen the new commercial where there's a camera and there's the camera at Starbucks and it's monitoring all the workers and there's a count on how many cups of coffee each worker is making. So, you know, one worker is probably at a 10 count within a couple hours a day, but one person is at a 50 count. So you can kind of see where one employee might need more improvement and one employee might need a raise. Uh, so that's my second favorite. And then my third favorite that does not get talked about at all is um, Rocky display for the Apple TV. So uh, again, if you guys are, are Meraki Vision customers and are looking for that surveillance display, go ahead and download the Meraki display from the App Apple TV store. And you can actually have any display uh, uh, showcasing up to 16 cameras per display. So uh, you don't longer need a bunch of monitors or uh, some other software to give you that uh, that multiple vision display or multiple camera display. You can just download the app, Apple TV app, market display. It's free and get that same kind of outcome. So uh, very quickly, those are three of my favorite. Uh, I, I think that we don't talk about enough, but really give you uh, a lot more intelligence uh, than what Meraki gives you out of the platform. All right, thank you, Mike, Mark and Skyler. Uh, those are all great options and uh, just convenient add-ons that you can use. They're already built, nothing you have to program. Uh, so it's uh, a lot of good work put, put behind that on some of those marketplace applications. Um, we also want to talk about uh, some of the programs that are available to you as partners uh, with Meraki, and uh, some of those are provided by us as a distributor. We're, you know, we—that's one of our tasks is to try and make Meraki Cisco easier for you to transact and work with. Uh, U.S. customers in particular, please visit dnh.com/driven. Uh, we have a whole host of DNH hosted training programs there. Uh, we do quarterly trainings on Umbrella, um, Meraki. Uh, secure endpoint and some other stuff. Uh, we have a duo training coming up as well. And with the Morocco, Meraki training, uh, two of our uh, SEs, Skylar and Chris, are actually uh, certified to train this uh, CMNA-related course. So you can go through that. We call it uh, the, uh, uh, it's slipping my mind now. <laughs> 360 moment. plus. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's, uh, <laughs> it's been an afternoon. So yeah, so the 360 plus, uh, that's uh, two days of training there. And then at the end of that, you can take your test pass and your CMNA certified. So that's a really good credential that you or any of your staff can add on. And if you want to send your whole sales team, whole technical team into that training, uh, we can facilitate that too. Uh, so uh, definitely look at those on the Driven site. Um, we also have, uh, let's see, there's a CPE quoting tool that's been added in the past year or so. Uh, and with that one, if you have a deal ID cr already created, you can log into the Driven site, hit the CPE tool, and run a quote yourself. You don't have to go through our team, so a little bit of a time saver there. If you're comfortable creating your own deals and uh, all that, it just gives you one more way that you can get uh, your pricing even faster. Uh, so we definitely want you to take a look at that. Um, on the MX side of things, I definitely don't want to leave this out. We didn't get the chance to talk about our firewall devices today, uh, but there are some crazy discounts on the MX devices right now, especially that, that lower end. Um, they're 70 plus percent off. Uh, Cisco just uh, actually dropped the pricing a little bit further this past week. Uh, so if you're looking for firewall devices, it's a fantastic price. It's a good time to get those. Um, and the discount is, uh, you know, almost another, uh, almost double the discount you get standard. So uh, very good discounting there. Um, and uh, finally, we have uh, upcoming Solutions Labs. We don't have anything on the calendar yet, but they are going to be coming soon as we get into the new year here. If you want to see those, look at dnh.com slash solutions lab. Uh, you can watch uh, past events. You can watch this one uh, once it's released. Uh, you can, you know, uh, so those will all be available there. And uh, finally, uh, an honorable mention to our uh, Cisco Cloud Marketplace. Uh, we have Umbrella, Secure Endpoint, Duo, and several other products there, and it's the easiest way to buy that stuff. You can log in, create your own quote, sell it out, and uh, there's no deal ID even uh, needed there. The discounts, discounting is already built in. Uh, it's a really fantastic way to buy, especially those security products uh, for, for your partners uh, or for your clients. Um, so Mark Schuyler, thank you very much for all the great content here. 
Uh, we're going to move into the Q&A session here real quick. Uh, if you haven't added a question to the uh, Q&A, please do so. Uh, we'd love to answer your questions. We'll stick around for a little bit here and answer those, and then uh, we'll close out for the day. But uh, jumping in first, uh, actually just a comment. I'm happy to put this out there. The uh, We had one person say, excellent video, clarified a couple questions he had. Um, so we're very happy to hear that uh, content worked well for you. Um, and then uh, Mark or Skyler, I'll let you fight over this one, but I'll, I'll put it out into the uh, common uh, field here. Uh, how does Cisco Meraki switch solution align with E-rate requirements for schools? And what specific features does it offer to ensure compliance and enhance network performance in an educational setting? Sure. Good I can take it I'll, if you... I'll, I'll, I'll let you tackle the technical piece, but I know there's <laughs> advantage. Uh, education pricing, so you do definitely get special pricing uh, when you're an education partner. But go ahead and, if, if you're comfortable, tackle the, the technical piece. Oh, yeah. No problem at all. Uh, yeah, they do a lot of things. We actually get um, a lot of E-rate customers that are actually looking for it. Um, I would uh, recommend that you maybe reach out to our Cisco support team and uh, schedule a um, maybe demo of the Meraki dashboard. We'd be happy to walk you through it um, and talk to you more in depth about it. But um, there's a lot of things uh, from layer seven uh, uh, application visibility to the layer seven uh, firewall where you can actually go in and select specific sites like YouTube or Netflix or torrent sites or adult sites or any number of things um, and uh, limit their bandwidth uh, specifically uh, without needing to do a ton of stuff. There's group policies um, that make a lot of the management a lot more simple. Uh, it also integrates with uh, Rocky um, System Manager, which is uh, um, a little more than an MDM solution, but if you're familiar with MDM solutions, they're a really great, um, that's a really great way to think about it. Um, and that adds all sorts of um, additional functionality um, and it works on iOS, um, Apple, Mac OS, um, Chromebook, uh, Windows, essentially, any um, operating system out there, Android. Um, so you really have a lot of options to manage there as well as um, control the device, remotely wipe the device, do all sorts of device, do stuff like Sentry Wi-Fi, which is uh, getting into the weeds of uh, some of that. But um, there's a lot of really cool functionality in there um, in terms of uh, the security side, but also um, just the dashboard is just a tool upon itself uh, for all the um, absolute plethora of information that they have at your fingertips that you can go back and see the data, you know, our connections dropping or the VLANs working, um, you know, all, just all sorts of, all sorts of different things. All right, thanks, Skylar. Uh, and Mark, I, you mentioned pricing and some of the sales aspects. I, I, we'd love to hear that too. That's great information to have. Yeah, uh, there, there is a, uh, a E-rate program within Rocky that will give you extra discount. Are you guys hearing me okay? Yeah, yes, sure. okay. Uh, perfect. Uh, so um, feel free to reach out to the support team or I can pop in the E-rate guide within Meraki and give you all the specific details uh, on how you purchase uh, using that discount. Perfect, excellent there. And, and that's a process with a quick quote. Uh, you know, we can help walk you through that or uh, you can do that on your own certainly as you get those and it just makes again, everything faster, but uh, there's a little checkbox for E-rate and uh, you can add that uh, program to the, uh, to a deal. Um, we also have uh, another question here. I, when will these be available? And I think it was during our MS-130 section, so I'm, I'm gonna go with that. Uh, when are those MS-130 is gonna be available? Uh, so they're right available. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Scott. No, you want to uh, I think they're available now. Um, most of them, some of the models will be coming out in the near future. Um, the Catalyst 9300 Meraki are out now. Um, they're actually really popular in case that's what you were asking about. And um, if you're interested in those, I'd buy them now rather than later because the lead times keep going up each week. Um, although they're still very short, it's only like 14 days, but um, you know, progressively we are seeing them go up. And then if you're asking about the MG51, it is out uh, now as well um, and is available for purchase. Perfect, we've covered all bases there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, then we have uh, that fellow down in Dallas, and he's he's got 57 today. That sounds really nice. I would I would take that in a heartbeat. Uh, but too. even down there, that sounds that sounds pretty cold. Um, 
All right. Uh, recording of this device, will it be available? Yes, absolutely. Again, on the uh, Solutions Lab website, uh, it'll be available there. It usually takes uh, three to five days, and we get that uploaded, uh, so you'll be able to have that. Um, let's see. I want to make sure. The cellular providers that work the MG cellular appliance. Quick review there again, Skyler. Sure, uh, T-Mobile, AT&T, and uh, Verizon. So the uh, big three, but as long as um, it can work on the correct bands, um, you should be good to use um, any of the other ones. So as long as uh, you, the provider that you want to use uses the same bands as those three big providers, you should be okay, but you can always call Rocky Support to verify. Oh, perfect. Very good. And I've used one of the previous models with uh, one of those companies that uh, leases bands from other, another company that is supported, and it, it did work. It uh, fired right up. Uh, let's see. Oh, can I power an MS-130 switch with PoE? Yes, the compact switches, you definitely can. Um, the larger ones, no, uh, but um, the compact switches definitely can be uh, powered with PoE. All right, perfect. Maybe as we start to get those 100-watt uh, uh, PoE ports and, and beyond. <laughs> we'll see some of those yeah, larger swatches. <laughs> Imagine a 1200 watt PoE port. Um, let's see, the slide deck available for download. We'll touch base with you. We can uh, we can get this over to you directly, so we'll uh, keep your name for that. If anybody else wants it, hit up Cisco support at dnh.com. We'll get the slide deck over to you. Very happy to provide this for you. Um, and then uh, Matthew, where can we find the info on Cisco MX discounts? We hadn't heard about this prior. Uh, I'll answer that one real quick for you. Uh, Matthew, contact Cisco, Cisco specialist at dnh.com. Uh, they're the sales side of our group that handles all the pricing, discounting, and all that sort of stuff, and they can help get you pricing there. Um, some of that pricing will show up on dnh.com already. It's a, it's an extended fast track rebate. Um, but uh, there, there's an extra component if we do a quick quote. So uh, reach out to the Cisco specialist team. They'll get a quick quote going for you on any, any of the MX devices, and uh, you can get your pricing from there. And I think we may have all the questions. I'll pause just a second here and mark them red and uh, double check myself. Yeah, I think we're probably pretty good. Um, before I close out here, Mark, any final words from you? I just want to say thank you to you to to the team at DNH here and all of our partners that are on our session today. Uh, you know, I think the DNH SEs and technical team are the best in the channel, best at all, every DSD I think in here in Americas. So please, please utilize them. Um, I can't speak enough good things about them. Thank you for everything you guys do. Mark, you're getting a holiday card this year. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, Skyler, any final words from you? No, I just encourage everyone to reach out. Um, if they're not familiar with Meraki, we can definitely help get you a little more familiarized. Uh, the Driven site that Aaron mentioned is amazing, and we have a really great Driven team that can help you grow your Meraki and Cisco partnership, which we always encourage you to do to get the best pricing. And uh, that's it. Hope everyone had a great day and enjoyed our session. Perfect. Thank you very much. So we want to thank you as the audience for joining us. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around. We appreciate you so much. We, we love working with you every day. Uh, if you need anything to get started, reach out to Cisco Specialist at dnh.com. If you're on the Canada side, they have a different email address. Uh, reach out to them. Uh, but US side, hit them up, and they can get you going anywhere you need to go, uh, whether it's to us on the support team or uh, you know, on, on some of the sales uh, capabilities and pricing and everything that's available there. With that, have a great week, and I hope your move into winter is a nice warm one. We'll talk to you guys later.